What's going on, everyone? So the Minnesota Timberwolves, at least the first two games, really handed it to the Denver Nuggets. Uh, you're talking about the defending champions, one of the better offensive teams, one of the better uh, half-court offense teams, one of the better teams in the league that many people thought could very likely go back-to-back -back this year. Basically got ran through the first two games. Now, look, it's still Denver. I think that they put up a fight. If Denver loses one game in Minnesota, I believe this series is over. I personally think this series is over. I think Minnesota is going to win this series. But, like, you look at some of this. I mean, that third quarter in game two, that defense, a clinic, that, I mean, that was one of, if not the best defensive just clinics that we have ever seen. I'm particularly, I'm talking about specifically that third quarter. I mean, they were absolute clams. So one of the best offense teams in the league. And it just, Denver just looks completely outmatched. And now there's all this hype and all this excitement for Minnesota, which is warranted, right? I mean, Anthony Edwards is, the dude is, <laughs> that guy is, if he pulls this off and wins an NBA championship, he'll be looked at as the best player in the league. I mean, the guy is on an absolute tear. Special, spectacular, but it's the, the roster as a whole. They are now, in my opinion, the standard. And it looks like we are headed for a crash course of the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Boston Celtics, right? Boston's basically just running through everybody. I mean, Cleveland looked completely outmatched. And Boston doesn't even have Porzingis. It's just Boston's more likely than not just going to run through the East. And they'll be the representatives in the East. And Minnesota, I mean, they're running through the West. And Minnesota's had a much tougher opponent, right? Like, they, they played the Phoenix Suns, which I was never really sold on Phoenix. We've talked about it numerous times on this channel. I had talked heavily as soon as they traded for Bradley Beal, right? For those that have been here from the beginning, right? What did I say? As soon as they traded for Bradley Beal, that was it. That was the death sentence. They're, they're not winning it. That was the most foolish thing that they could have done. They have no playmaking. They just messed up any chance of potential depth. You basically just got three guys that are essentially the same player, just at different scales. It just doesn't add up. doesn't make sense. But they did that. And yet, they still have Devin, Be Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant, and was a team that many people still thought would be a, a, a offensive powerhouse, right? And, and would not get swept. Well, guess what? Minnesota literally has not lost a game. Then they followed that up with playing the defending champions that many people thought would more likely than not win the championship again this year and are up 2-0 getting ready to play in Minnesota. Right? Minnesota, then, assuming that they get through Denver, which, I again, I believe that they will, are going to end up playing either Dallas or OKC. OKC is too small. The Wolves probably beat them in five. Right? I mean, at the rate that they're looking and the way that they're going, they might sweep them too. And then Dallas, kind of a lot of the same things. Like, I, I, I think the Wolves kind of just run through Dallas too. But, you know, I mean, you have Luka and Kyrie, so you never really want to count them out. And you know, I think they could maybe make it a series or make it interesting. But more likely than not, these two teams, Boston and Minnesota, probably just going to run through the East and the West play each other, and then we'll see how it goes. But Minnesota is, at this point, the gold standard, right? They're they're the, the roster that everybody wants to build, right? Every like Look at a team like Toronto. Toronto's been trying to build a team like this for like 10 years, right? Not, maybe not that long, but since basically Kawhi left, right? A bunch of big, versatile wings that can switch and, and defend and shoot and... You know, they got their superstar and, and Anthony Edwards. They got their big men, right? Like, you're talking about a team that is deep, they're versatile, they're talented, right? They got switchability. They, they have smothering defense. They can put up points on offense. They're coached well, right? They got a good balance of youth and, and veteranness, right? Like, they got the, the veteran leader and Mike Conley, right? The guy that's the locker room guy and kind of keep everybody, you know, uh, calm, cool, and collected, it's just, it's it's incredible what they've been able to do and how good they've looked. And look, if I'm being honest, like, I did not see this from Minnesota. I thought Minnesota was, I thought that they would be good. I thought that they might, but I 
figured they were probably a year or so away you know, from being where they are right now. And now it's like, no, they might actually pull this thing off. But they just, again, they, they just have, they're the, they're the gold standard. They, they genuinely are the gold standard for how you want to build a roster. Good influx of veterans and depth. That good, solid guys off the bench. You know, uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker is basically just coming in and locking down defensively and hitting big shot after big shot. Uh, you know, Nas Reed has just been absolutely special so far in this series. Uh, he's been just getting it done on both sides of the basketball, and his versatility has been great. Right, And, you know, they got the two big men that match up and can kind of make Jokic work and make things difficult for him. I mean, they're built and designed perfectly for pretty much every team in the league. And even Boston, even if they do end up playing Boston, they match up against Boston probably better than anybody. As far as like size wise goes, the bigs, the the athletic versatile wings that you can throw and match up on a, a Derek White and a Drew Holiday and a Jason Tatum and a Jalen Brown. Like they're one of they they might be the only team that really has the depth and versatile defensive guys that can just bother Boston and how much they lock down and how good they are on the defense side of things. Again, good luck. I mean, you know, Boston should win that. Yeah, you know, just looking at the talent, looking at the roster, but man, the way Anthony Edwards is playing, Carl Anthony Towns could cause some trouble on the on the offense side of things, Rudy Gobert, right? Mike Conley, I mean, it's just, you know, Jaden McDaniels. Just go down the list and it's just like, man, Minnesota is just the ridiculous. And they're incredibly young, right? They, they're just a bunch of kids out there for the most part, right? Again, they do have their veteran guys, but it is a lot of just like young, athletic, hyper, just playing on pure adrenaline and athleticism and just out there hooping. I mean, Mike Conley said it himself, right? Like they they just, they're fearless. They, they, they don't understand the, you know, the ramifications and the, and the magnitude of these games. They're just looking at it as like, hey, we get to play basketball, right? Let's go out there. Let's hoop. Let's do our thing. Let's play our game. And they just, they look like a well-oiled machine right now. I mean, what they did and what they have done to to Denver has just been, it's been impressive. Like, genuinely impressive. I don't know how you look at those two games and don't just go, wow. <laughs> Especially game two. Right, no Rudy Gobert. You think that, like, okay, well, you know, the defense player of the year, right? Okay, Wolves defense is probably going to take a step back. They were better. <laughs> like, it's crazy, right? And they just and they thing is that like they're just literally running through Denver. Like it's not even it hasn't even been a contest. It's just they they have basically controlled this, especially game two in particular, controlled it start to finish. There was never a moment in that game where you were like, Denver Denver could come back and win. And you always, like, that Lakers series, and look, I'm a Laker fan, right? But that series, it was just like, every game, you're just like, ah, you know Denver's probably, Denver's going to push, and they're going to come back. And it's like, even the one game the Lakers won, like, they controlled that game start to finish. But there were still several moments where you're like, oh, here it comes. Like, you just, I, you don't feel that way with Minnesota, right? Like, Minnesota just kept laying it on them. Right? It was like Minnesota just decided, like, ah, okay, they've had enough. Let's save, let's save a little more for game three. Like, I don't think Denver gets swept, but at the rate it's going, I wouldn't be shocked. I, I would not be surprised whatsoever. I mean, Denver's out here throwing temper tantrums. You, know, you got Mike Malone crying and throwing a fit like he's a little kid. And then you have, you know, Jamal Murray throwing a temper tantrum on the sideline, throwing heat pads on the court and stuff, got fined 100 k which, uh, I mean, anyone else he probably would have gotten suspended, but because it's Denver and it's Jamal Murray and it's just, it's wild. But Minnesota just, they just keep showing up, keep knocking them down. Lay them, put them in front of them, all right, we'll knock them down. They're just, they're the standard. They're, they're the model that is built. And they're, they're going to, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have 90% of the teams in the league all try to now emulate what Minnesota does. 
right? Even if they don't win the championship, let's say they just get to the finals, right? If they run through the West the way that they are and they play Boston, right? If they if they lose to anybody but Boston, then I, I think to an extent it'll fizzle out. I think there'll still be like, uh-oh, but I think a lot of the hype will fizzle out. But if they get to the finals and they let's say they lose to Boston and you know even a tough six or something, right? Then I think everyone's gonna go, okay, we need to build a Minnesota, right? Which again, there are tons of teams that have been trying. It's just it's easier said than done. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How you feel? What are your thoughts? Um do you agree that, like, yeah, these guys are kind of the, the gold standard? Do you think, no, they're not? Um, you know, it's just, they're just hot right now, and it's just the moment. But you got to keep in mind, it is a copycat league. So, anyway, again, I you feel whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.